Hi, I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from YourBlackWorld.com. Today I saw in the news that there was yet another very interesting, dramatic, kind of sad incident taking place inside the home of the of the great Deion Sanders, who was one of the uh, most amazing professional football players I ever saw. Um, I remember seeing this brother predict touchdowns where he would literally tell you before he caught the ball that he was going to score. He was that good. So with with that with those spoils or with those success comes the spoils of attracting interesting women and so Dion um, attracted his beautiful wife Pilar whom he married in 1999 and many of you know that the marriage has broken down like really broken down and uh, and they're fighting they're living in the same house it's a big house and they are fighting like cats and dogs and recently there was a domestic violence incident where the police got called and Pilar attacked. Dion and all this other stuff and so I was just really curious to understand some of this in terms of understanding the teachable moments on domestic violence that came from this so I wanted to bring in Reed the relationship guide she is uh, our resident relationship uh, guru uh, with your black world with our network and with black light and walk how are you doing today Reed? I'm doing good how are you? I am doing very well. So when you, as a relationship consultant, as somebody who talks to couples about their relationships and you try to see things from the male and the female side, what was going through your mind when you saw this drama with with Dion and and his wife and the domestic violence and all of that? Um, It's just a horrible situation. I mean, it's definitely time for them to separate. I don't think they should be living in the same home if, you know, they can't keep their hands off of each other. So I just think it's a devastating situation, especially for their family, um, for the kids. I'm sure it's pretty embarrassing. And I think it's time that they really should break away from each other's presence as much as possible. Yeah, well, you know, Dion was actually on Twitter talking about the incident the other day. He was actually <laughs> he actually took pictures of his kids filling out the police report and all that stuff. And I just think that that's so interesting because... It's sad when we involve children in our BS, you know, when the kids have to pick sides and they have to witness all these things that really kids should not see. Um, I know personally, I I was fortunate enough to have two parents that my my biological father left when I was a baby, but my stepfather was there and my parents were pretty peaceful, pretty consistent. And I can't imagine having them fighting like this and me having to pick a side. Um, it, it wouldn't matter who was right and who was wrong. It would still hurt me. I mean, do you think that people forget about the impact that their little relationship drama even has on the kids? I'm sorry, what was the question? Do you think that sometimes couples forget about the impact that their drama has on their children? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think in this situation, and let me be clear, so I don't, I mean, I I do believe what's going on, but I I also think that this entire situation is a publicity stunt. Um, But just for the sake of this conversation, let's just pretend as if, you know, this truly is a domestic violent relationship. Um, I do think that the parents sometimes forget the strain that it causes on their kids. And I think a lot of that has to do because they're so emotionally strained themselves that they can't think straight. They're not thinking like a logical, you know, they're not uh, thinking logically. So, yeah, I do think, unfortunately, the children are forgotten in the circumstance. And this, you know, it becomes a very um, selfish or self-centered thought process. You know, it's like, well, mm. you're going to speak on my behalf, right? You're going to you're gonna tell the police what mommy did to me, right? Or what daddy did to me, right? Um, so, again, I do think that it's because, the parents are emotionally strained themselves and they're just not thinking logically. Well, you know, that, that's interesting that you think it's a publicity stunt. So you think that they're just making all this up, that it's not even, uh, that there's a chance that this isn't even real, that they're trying to get um, maybe a reality show out of this or something. What, what do you think that they have to gain by telling the whole world their, their drama like this? Uh, I definitely think that they could get, a, you know, book deals. I mean television show um probably more money in the divorce settlement you know they're either one of them are fighting 
to Dion, I'm sure, is fighting to save as much money as possible. And his uh, estranged wife is, you know, fighting to take as much as possible. So they can benefit from highlighting all of these situations in their um, divorce. And um, I think it's unfortunate for more for several reasons. But one thing that kind of annoys me with the situation is um, it kind of glorifies domestic abuse, makes it seem like it's funny. You know, it's um, like it's a, a joke and it's not. It's a very serious thing. I mean, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people die from this and it's not. Not to be taken lightly. And so Deion Sanders tweeting about his estranged wife hitting him, you know, as she was doing it and then taking pictures of the kids, filling out a police report just further, you know, makes a mockery of the situation. It's very tragic. People who live that lifestyle day in and day out wouldn't even think twice about taking a photograph of their kids, you know, filling out police reports. It's actually very, um, shameful and very devastating so for him to publicize it and you know make it seem like oh look at this crazy lady look at what she's doing look at what she's putting our family through they're really making a mockery out of a very tragic situation so yeah i do think it's a publicity stunt i do Mm, that's, that's really interesting. Um, you know, now, now let's assume, I, and I'm not going to say you're wrong. I, I'm going to say we don't, we don't, we don't really know, but it could be. I mean, you never, and, and I can certainly agree with you that his behavior, right. his behavior is a little bit odd, right? I mean, you're right. I mean, you know, the, the, your daddy should not be taking pictures of you filling out a police report and then putting them on Twitter. You know, I mean, just the idea of, right. of you know, the idea of grown ass people acting like teenagers on Twitter is already weird enough, right? I mean, let alone this kind of situation where your children might very likely need counseling uh, when this is done. Um, now, what do you, I'm gonna ask you one question, uh, a couple more questions. First question I'm gonna ask you is, do you think that there is, um, uh, any kind of weird stigma or, or way we perceive it differently, given that Dion is claiming as a man to be a victim of domestic violence. Do you think that if he were a woman going through that where her husband had crashed through the house and attacked her, that people would see it the same way? Um, how do you think that, that people feel and respond when, when it's a man that's, that's being victimized as opposed to a woman? Well, I think it's, you know, you know, like this situation is not taken as seriously as it should be. Um, I know that I'm sure a lot of people out there have seen that movie, A Thin Line Between Love and Hate, with Martin. And I can't remember the, uh, yeah, that, the other that was just like, actress that, 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 was, or the that main was actress probably, that was in the film. No, that that was probably the scariest movie in the history of Negro kind. Every black man I know who saw that movie. <laughs> Walked out of that theater traumatized, just so you know. And I, and I, and I'll tell you what else was really crazy about it, Reed, was I went on, I went to see that movie on a date with a woman, and I remember that she watched the movie, and when it was over, she said, you go girl. And that's when I knew I should probably not go out with this woman ever again. But I'll let you continue. I just thought I would throw out a little bit, pers- a little bit of personal business there. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, going back to the question, um, yeah, so I think about that film, and I mean, like you said, it was frightening, even as a woman, you know, watching how that woman reacted, um, her obsession with him, it was just, it was creepy, it scared me, but I mean, it's, it's a serious matter. It's definitely a serious matter. And I do think sometimes um, when a man is the victim, like in this certain, in this situation, I do think that it's not taken as seriously as it should be. Um, and it's unfortunate. It's just as deadly or as dangerous as the woman being a victim. Okay. Well, it's very last... dangerous. Okay. Well, and, and I agree with you. I mean, I have seen... Um, and, and this is my two cents on it. I'm going to let you get the last word. My two cents on it is to say to anybody who is experiencing domestic violence on any level, is, who's being threatened on any level, who has any instinct that tells them that they might not be safe, uh, is to do something about it before it's too late. I know a lot of people who have died because they didn't act soon enough or they thought that the person's threat was not serious or maybe some in some cases they've even told the police and the police didn't take it seriously and the person ended up dying right. and so i say to anybody who is close to a situation that involves domestic violence whether you're involved <clears throat> or you know someone who is involved 
take action now because you might hit a point where it's too late for you to do anything. And the other thing I recommend is that whether you're male or female, um, a relation violence has really no place in a relationship. Uh, when 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 things get too volatile, I believe a person should you should eject yourself from that situation. That means shut it down and get out, get away, you know, uh, get away from the moment, and then try to move away from the relationship uh, because you should be able to handle your disputes uh, intelligently and productively and peacefully. You shouldn't have to get into all this violence. But I'm gonna ask you, Reed, uh, as a relationship person and as someone who speaks on this issue on a regular basis, what uh, what what do you say to those who might be experiencing domestic violence or see any kind of violence in, in their relationships? Okay, yeah, I definitely agree with everything you said, and I'm going to actually look directly into the camera for this one. Um, if you are a victim, male or female, of a domestic um, abusive relationship, Please, please, please create an exit strategy. It is not something to be taken lightly. Um, there are organizations out here to help you. And again, this is male and female. Um, the first thing you want to do is make a plan. You want to make a, an exit strategy. Um, so that would, you know, include getting out of the house if you guys live together like Dion and his estranged wife you definitely want to get away from the person so you want to move into an unlisted address, um, move to another location and you know make sure your address is not listed. You would like to get a P.O. box um, so that way you're again this is to try to keep your um, estranged lover from finding out where you've relocated to. Um, you definitely want to look at the confidential laws in your city because, or in your state because um, different states do have laws where you can, you know, if you want your mail forwarded from that home, there is a way to do that safely so that your strange lover does not find you. Um, and then, you know, most importantly, just reach out, definitely reach out to people and let them know. Um, you know, keep people informed, your loved ones, of course. Keep them informed and let them know where you are in your progress or in your process of getting away from this estranged lover. And just make sure that everyone's on the same page, that no one is corresponding with this person and letting them know what's going on in your life. Um, and it's always good to get a restraining order as well. A restraining order does not necessarily protect you 100%. Again, uh, those are kind of contingent upon where you live. So I would definitely look into the laws for the restraining orders in your area, but um, it doesn't help to get one. It's just an extra means of safety to protect you. And if you have children involved, to protect your children as well. So it's a serious matter. It's not to be taken lightly. Um, again, get away. I mean, that's, that's it. Get away. You got to get away from it. All right. All right. Well, that is re- our resident relationship guide and re is a regular regular contributor to your black world and our network and as you know we like to take the things that are happening in the world and allow all of us to to educate and elevate and uh to pursue the excellence in our lives um and life is a journey of love and who you choose to spend your life with who you choose to love is one of the most important decisions that you'll ever make so i want to say thank you very much for your time re i really appreciate it no problem. Thank you for touching on the subject. It's very important. It's definitely not to be made um, or taken lightly. All right. And thank you all for checking us out at yourblackworld.com. And until we meet again, please stay strong, be blessed, and be educated. We are gone. Peace.